Our referee in charge. Without Campio, 12 rounds. Yes, round. Touch goods. Buena suerte, touch your gloves. Touch your gloves. Good. All right, let's check the tail of the tape for these two. Marquez, 5'7", 3 inches taller than Sanchez. He's a half pound lighter. He's four years younger than Sanchez, and he has a reach advantage of four inches. The NABO rules governing this title fight. Ten-point must system. Winner of the round gets ten. The loser a lesser number. Three knockdown rule in effect. No standing eight counts. Saved by the bell in the last round only. Referee or doctor can stop the fight. And if they stop the fight due to a headbutt, they'll go to the cards after the third round. Pat Russell standing by. There's the bell, and here we go. It's scheduled for 12, and this is round one. Sanchez is in the gold or yellow trimmed in frills of black. And in the black trunks trimmed in red is Juan Manuel Marquez. Sanchez works very hard in the ring, Tom. He can be a good mover. He really competes, though. Very good body puncher. Takes a good shot. Known for uh, being a dirty fighter at times, especially for low blows. He's been disqualified in his career. Keep that in mind. And keep in mind that you've got uh, still a relatively inexperienced opponent across the ring from him. Marquez, who may not have seen the type of tactics that Sanchez could show to him here tonight. Marquez, uh, we've had the uh, good fortune, and I don't mean to intimate that we are going to slant our comments uh, in his favor because we wouldn't do that. But we watched him literally grow up, Rich. Watched him get knocked down for the first time and bounce back up everything. Right, come away from uh, what might have been a disappointing loss to a pretty good win. Maybe one he really didn't deserve. I'm thinking about the one with Wheeler, but we watched him grow up, no question about it. Well, one thing I like about Marquez is that in the ring, Tom, is that he does have a great heart and he does respond to situations that uh, when it looks very tough for him he will he will come back that wheeler fight he kept at it he kept at it he was seeing out pointed and finally although the stoppage was controversial in the 10th round he stopped wheeler even though he was behind on points and about to lose a decision to wheeler and then in the daryl pinkney fight that you uh, that you talked about he took a smack right on the chin and went down and it was a good solid knockdown by pinkney a guy remember who knocked out junior jones keep Amen. that in mind that's right and marquez tasted that power of pinkney but came back to beat him yes he did so he has really matured as we watched him in his career. Can you clarify one thing for me? What is the WBC International Championship? I'm not quite clear on that. <laughs> I don't know. I think they, they needed a title uh, for one of the fights along, <laughs> along the way, and they came up with that one. They've got the Intercontinental, they've got the International. Well, why not? There's huh? a, yeah. That was a title held by Capito Sanchez, nicknamed the Cyclone. A title hardly means much anymore unless you're at the very top and you're talking about that world championship. That's right. Yeah, they can almost find a, a set of uh, letters, an alphabet soup thing to lay on you no matter what division, what right. weight, wherever you're fighting. So. And that's why, you know, what is important now is a good fight and a good matchup and uh, just see who wins. And that's enough, I think, for most fight fans. Pat Russell is the referee. I like his work. He never interferes with the fighters he is at a distance from them he lets them fight and he's almost unnoticed out there but he'll be right on top of it should the situation warrant it nice exchange right hand by marquez a pretty good right answering to the body by sanchez round one a lot of dancing moving trying to fade each other out and look one another over we'll be back after this pepsi theft it can happen anywhere anytime fight back Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, <laughs> but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. Not today. Thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi, Generation Next. Available in six-pack. Hitting it further than you've ever dreamed. Staying out of jail more often. That's what owners of titanium bubble drivers are telling us. Including some well-known ones. The easy swinging power of the titanium bubble driver. Tailor-made. Find your game. They come for round two, and right toward the end of round...
number one why Sanchez suffered a cut over the right eye high up in what would be the um, eyebrow and um, the, that's the bad news the good news uh, Rich Morata is that Chuck Bodak is working in his corner and he's one of the best cut men in all of boxing yeah and uh, Bodak went right to work on it looks like it could be a kind of a cut that could develop into something that would be dangerous for Sanchez along the way but again uh, Bodak is, uh, is as good as there is right now in terms of a cut man so he's got a good man in his corner for that and of course, uh, Rich is referring to the fact that the cut would be above the eye, hence the possibility of blood coming down into the eye and affecting the vision. And of course, once that happens, why then the fighter starts to rub at it, of course, and that just exacerbates the situation and makes it a lot worse. This is round two. They're scheduled for 12. Sanchez featherweights. A lot of movement, Tom, and it, uh, even when he's standing still on his feet, he gives you a lot of movement. He gets down on the crouch and starts shaking his shoulders yeah. around. It looks like almost nervous uh, movement. It reminds yeah. me of Don Coriel <laughs> on the sidelines of the Chargers. Easy <laughs> now. Making you nervous just <laughs> watching him. I was the Charger announcer during those Halcyon days in San Diego. I tell you, Coriel was something. He was magnificent. Marquez, I thought, landed the most significant punch of the first round. Uh, a good, solid right hand uh, on the chin, probably enough to get him, get him around. And uh, while they bounce up and down at long range, suddenly they step into one another, and each connects with that left hand, or they have so far. That's been the pattern of this fight. This is round number two. And it's scheduled for 12, of course, with the title on the line. You know, you talked about the Chargers, the uh, boxing commissioner of the state of California, Willie Buchanan, great defensive back for the Chargers. War number 28, what a good ball player Willie was. His best days might have been with Green Bay, and he finished up his career down in San Diego at the San Diego State, but he was a magnificent. Nice left hand of the body on that exchange by Sanchez. The last time we saw Marquez, he was fighting Cedric Mingo at the pond in Anaheim. He gradually wore him down. One thing about Marquez is he's very patient in the ring, Tommy. He always sticks to his game plan. And he's willing, he doesn't necessarily go for broke in the early rounds, but he sticks to his game plan, and usually he ends up getting to him. And he landed a good left that uh, Sanchez ran into and an overhand right over the left hand of Sanchez. I thought that of the fighters that we saw at the Forum and at the Pond last year, as promoted by Forum Boxing, that Marquez put in the best single individual performance on one night when he fought former WBA uh, Bantamweight champion Julio Gervasio down at the Pond. He just fought an absolutely flawless, almost perfect fight against Gervasio and, and knocked him out in the eighth round. It was a brilliant, brilliant show. Chuck Bodak's going to be busy, Rich, between rounds. We'll go with Sanchez, and that cut has opened up again over the right eye of Sanchez. And you can see the blood coming down at Bodak with his back to you. He's one of the very best in the business. He's right in there on top of that. Good people, Francisco Guzman, Rodolfo Aguilar. Those are the people in there, and that's Bodak, who was taking center stage, and why not? That's what he's got to do, is stem the flow there. Over on the other side, we go to Marquez's corner and things are not nearly so hectic, very quiet. That's Nacho Beristain, right over his shoulder. And I tell you, the only surprise you'd have in that corner would be if uh, Juan Manuel Marquez ever looked away while Beristain was talking to him. He is very intent on everything the man says. Tom, I just checked with Pat Russell, and I'm surprised he told me that he did roll a headbutt. Really? And uh, Dick Young, the judge sitting next to me, didn't know it himself. No, so, I, didn't, uh, well, I didn't see the ruling either. So now we know that it's a situation that if this fight uh, gets stopped after this next round, we will go to the scorecards if it's uh, forced to be stopped because of the cut eye, which uh, Russell says was caused by a headbutt. Well, it is going to be a troublesome, worrisome thing, I believe, that cut. Sanchez has won three consecutive bouts since he lost a 12-round decision to Marco Antonio Barrera. Fight in which he fought for Barrera's World Championship, WBO, at 122 pounds. Marquez, by the way, has risen to fifth in the WBO rankings. So he's holding on to that NEBO title. So he's getting into position now for where he might be able to challenge for a championship fight. These men are featherweights. Um, I'm wondering what they actually weigh coming into the ring here tonight. Uh, you mentioned Barrera. I mean, his 
his uh, vain effort to uh, get uh, the title back from Junior Jones. He actually weighed 132 pounds when he fought Saturday night uh, last week, and uh, Jones himself weighed 126 or 28, so... It appears as though in the, in the lighter weights, Tom, and by that I'm talking 140 on down, the fighters are putting on uh, at least 5 to 10 pounds yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the one day, the 24 hours between the weigh-in and the fight. Marquez is wearing the black trunks trimmed in red and the gold trimmed in black worn by Agapito Sanchez of the Dominican Republic. You know who's buried in the Dominican Republic? Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus discovered the new world by landing at Hispianola, Dominican Republic, the other half of the island of Haiti. You're a fount of knowledge. He's buried there in a place called the Prima Cathedral, which was the first cathedral built in the new world for about 15 years. I have a whole new respect for the level of intent. <laughs> Pat Russell stepping in quickly to warn Sanchez about getting his blows up. Sanchez comes into the fight tonight with a reputation of sometimes um, not being able to recognize the belt line from the kneecap and uh, throws punches that land anywhere in between. There's another left hand that's low, and uh, Russell looked at him, and I don't know if... Uh, and you know Russell knows that reputation, and he's, he's beginning to look for it here probably. When you develop that reputation, referees will be looking for it. Oh, yeah. They have them. Yeah, yeah. There's another one, too, Tom. Body style is quite a contrast. Uh, heavily muscled, uh, that's Sanchez. And Marquez not nearly so heavily muscled. What a good fight this is, though. We'll be back. Still using Western Union to wire money? Next time, go to MoneyGram and save up to nine bucks, unless you'd rather be taken here. MoneyGram. Always less than Western Union. Still using Western Union to wire money? Next time, use MoneyGram and save up to nine bucks, because taking one bath a day is enough. MoneyGram. The better way to wire money. The new Dodge. To find the pickups that are number one in sales growth in California, here's a hint. Truck, you can out drive, out hustle, out tough, out muscle, out tow, out run, out work, and out fun. Show them what you got. From more available power to greater resale, Dodge Ram is number one in more categories versus Ford, Chevy, and GMC. Ram's also California's coolest, thanks to air at no extra charge. The new Dodge. After three rounds, Rich Morata has Marquez, the defending champion in the NABO featherweight division, up a point. And keep in mind, too, that Marquez, though, is one of those fighters who gets better, it seems like, as the fight wears along. And is almost stronger after the fifth round than he was at the beginning of the fight. Nice jab there by Marquez. He's in the black trunks, trimmed in red, an overhand right, and a left hand to the body. And I like how Juan throws his punches, Tommy, how he holds him up in a good defensive posture there. See that stance? A uh, good classic stance. Hands up high. Really pays attention to detail. Throws a pretty good jab. I think by the looks of these two guys, as they look at each other, they respect each other's ability, too. Both men um, really wary of making that one mistake, a punch that um, isn't thrown just right, that allows the other guy to come back like a lazy left and a big-time right hand to follow it. They, they're very wary of each other. Nice jab by... Sanchez. Marquez is trying to counter, though, Tom. He's trying to, in the last few punches, he's waited for Sanchez to lead and then has countered each of them effectively. Bojack has looked up to his reputation. I don't think the cut of the right eye of Pepito Sanchez has been a factor. Nice left hand, good countering left hand, almost an uppercut thrown in there by Marquez. That right hand landed on the gloves. It was blocked 
as much as anything else, but it was a nice looking punch, wasn't it, Red? Yes, absolutely, but Sanchez is tricky, Tom. He's a, he's a hard guy to get a real good, clean shot on, because he gives you all that nervous movement, which he is, he's adding lateral movement to it in this round as well. Don't you find the body uh, style's interesting, and Sanchez heavily muscled, and uh, looks just like he's been chiseled out of out of uh, marble, and, and Marquez is more clean of the uh, form, huh? Yeah, I, I prefer, if I had to choose just on the looks, the, uh, the, as far as boxing is concerned, though, the uh, type of body that Marquez has. That seems to me the kind of body where you really get the guys you have to power. Lean, that wide uh, type body that Danny Little Red Lopez, Thomas Hearns kind of looks. Nice exchange. Guys, we're in round number four, warming up to the task scheduled for 12. The NABO featherweight title on the line. Juan Manuel Marquez in the black and the red is the current champion. What a, a knockout victory over Cedric Mingo down at the pond not too long ago. He's won 19 in a row. His opponent, Agapito Sanchez, is 22 and 3 with 14 knockouts, making his forum and 97 debut. And round four comes to a close. And while the two fighters repair to their corners, I'll remind you the Ringsiders Club is offering you select seating, complimentary parking, and exclusive forum club membership. Join the Ringsiders Club, see the action up close, and become a part of the finest boxing program in America. Call now. The operators are standing by at 310-673-1773. And Chuck Bodak continues to work on the eyebrow over the right eye of Agapito Cyclone Sanchez of the Dominican Republic. Chuck working on the eye and the nose simultaneously there, putting some Vaseline up the nose as well. Across the way, literally unmarked. Juan Manuel Marquez, Nacho Beristain. Only one man talks in that corner. Huh, Reg? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you have to respect everything that Nacho Beristein has put together. His latest miracle, uh, Zaragoza. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, Zaragoza, in case you missed it, went over to Osaka and knocked out, defeat the uh, Japanese champion and Tetsuyoshi. Yeah, scooped up maybe a half a mil. <laughs> he continues to go along. Fernando Paramo, you know, the story about Zaragoza is that at every fight, he's what, 38, maybe 39, he's going to retire. And about halfway through every fight, he gets his second wind and turns around and says to whomever will listen, cancel that retirement party. We're going to continue here a little Change bit of longer. Plans. Yeah. Change of plans. Yeah. yeah, he just keeps going on. He's made more money in the last two years than he did in the first 15 years of his professional career. Yeah. The man is really in demand. And what a, just a phenomenon. That right hand and looked better than it was thrown by Marquez. It landed. He's got a bad right hand by Sanchez in return. We're in the fifth round of the bout scheduled for 12. Sanchez is having to reach for Marquez, and that is leaving him open, Tom, as he reaches out with the left hand and lunges a little bit. He is open for counter blows. Remember our tale of the tape, Rich, where Marquez has got a reach of 68 inches as opposed to 64 for Sanchez, which uh, means he, he indeed does have a, a problem in reaching out and making contact. And, of course, he is uh, shorter by about three inches at 5'7 to 5'4, so he does have those uh, things to overcome. There was a punch thrown low, really low, but uh, Marquez paid it no mind. Remember this guy went the distance with uh, Barrera yep. when uh, Marco Antonio was knocking everybody out. Held the WBO. 122 pound title. Nice boxing by Sanchez. 
through the left hand. It wasn't a big time punch, but it did land. Did a flurry of punches by Marquez that landed on nothing. And here you see too that patience I talked about from Marquez. A little bit frustrating, I think, for him in this round, Tom. But he sticks to his game plan. I mean, he doesn't go crazy, doesn't go wild. He's not getting out of sorts, even when Sanchez lands a shot like that. He just believes in what he does. He believes in the instructions he gets from Beristein, and he sticks to it. Nice exchange, and uh, punch was low, and uh, Sanchez was uh, cautioned for just a moment. Sanchez beginning to bleed a little bit more now, Tom. A cut uh, is open again, and the blood dripping pretty strong down his face. Well, Bodak will be back at it in a moment while this round comes to a close. Well, not much of a crowd here today, but it should be a good game. All right, Stewart's batting three here. Hold my Budweiser. I'm going to go find those guys. All right, Wedman toes the rubber. Delivers. Whoa, a long drive to left field. That ball's going to carry. It's going out of here. There's one lucky fan out there, but he's got something in his hands. What's he going to do? He's got to make his move. It's not going to look good. Ball bounced about 20 feet off his head. Please, just let go of the beer. Let go of the beer, son. Science! Hey, want to see some cool things? Where? At the Smithsonian. From famous flyers! To four-wheelers, Tucker made 51 of these cars. Washington Soul. Rocket ships. Dizzy Gillespie's trumpet. Lizard lips. The Smithsonian. Discovered. And Discover Card is proud to be partners in the anniversary celebration. Jaws. How many credit cards make a statement like that? The bell brings him out for round number six. This is scheduled for 12. But Sanchez on the left in the gold and black. In the black and red is the NABO featherweight champion, Juan Manuel Marquez. There was some really good work by Marquez in the final minute of that last round. It was beginning to get to Sanchez. I thought he was beginning to have an effect. His punch is finally beginning to have an effect and discourage Sanchez a little bit. And I think the cut was bothering Sanchez a little bit at the end of that last round. And um, a nice jab and a right hand that scored by Marquez a moment ago. Caught uh, Sanchez uh, rather flash. And there's another low blow. Boy, I'm surprised Russell didn't take a point away. He's cautioned him a couple of times. Marquez did not re require a rest, which we have been told now that under California rules, if a fighter needs a rest after a low blow, they're going to have to, it's mandated, take a point away from the fighter who inflicted the low blow. I think, personally, I think that's a terrible rule, and I think it's only a matter of time before we see that rule abused very badly by fighters who want to get a rest and want to get an extra point in the score. It does kind of leave the trap door or an escape route, but remember that the referee has to determine that it's been a low blow and has to uh, give the fighter the time. According to Marty Dankin, who certainly knows, he's one of the best in the business, sitting about, what's about 25 feet away from us, he's not working in this fight. It's incumbent upon the referee, if you give the fighter time to recover, you must assess the other fighter, take a point away from the low blow. I, I don't like that yeah. rule. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, right now, this give a lot of people a chance to slip through the, huh, fall through the cracks of it. Well, why does it have to be mandated, Tom? I mean, the, the referee is there to make that kind of a judgment. True, true. Whether to deduct a point or not. Uh, to his credit, why um, uh, Marquez has not given any indication that they'll hit low. There was a major problem for him, and he hasn't asked for any kind of uh, relief. No, he's a close fighter in there. I tell you, they're beginning to tee off now. Uh, the howdy do's and gee it's good to see you again part of this fight is all over these guys are beginning to get down to the nitty gritty so to speak we're in round number six about a half a minute remaining either man has been down in the first round a headbutt caused a cut over the right eye in the eyebrow of Agapito Sanchez he's in the gold 
Sanchez is not an easy guy to fight, despite the fact that he will come forward. He doesn't necessarily run from him. He'll come forward, but he will give you so much movement and so many different looks and little angles that he becomes difficult to get a good, clean shot on. But he is the type of fighter that Marquez fights best against, the guy that comes right at him. And in this regard, I don't know if Sanchez has any other recourse, Rich. He is shorter by three inches, and his reach is uh, four inches less than that of Marquez. So we go back into uh, Sanchez's corner. They're not working that much on the eye. I think Bodak has done a, a good job. I would expect nothing better than that from Bodak. He's outstanding. Yeah, he's, he's done a great job. He goes to work on it now, but it's really not bleeding very much. No. I don't think Marquez did much in that round offensively against Sanchez. Here's the low blow, Rich. What do you think? All right, we'll take a look at it now. Now, that is below the belt line, no question about it. Here it comes. Below the belt line. Not really down low in the groin area, though. And uh, although he stepped back and needed to collect himself, Pat Russell determined no point to touch. And that's the face of the champion, Juan Manuel Marquez. Winner of 19 straight. And he might be undefeated were it not for the ruling by the officials that he had knocked out the man in his first professional fight after the bell. And he was given a loss, so he's 19 and one. Pretty good answering left hand that uh, thrown by Sanchez, and it too looked as though it might be a long run. This is a tremendous learning experience for the youngster, Juan Manuel Marquez. Up to turn to four, couple months. Oh, Rich, he landed a solid left hand. Marquez did, and it just made uh, Sanchez blink, and he backed up and got hit with the right hand and comes back to mix it up again and throws the left. Really a good, solid shot by Marquez. And only the second time that I can recall in the fight where he actually gave ground. Marquez, the taller of the two, by three inches. But, but this is a guy, Sanchez, who takes a great shot and recuperates very quickly anyway, if you heard him. came away from that the worse off but i like marquez's work in there that counter punch that little left hand right up the center marquez a big favorite for the crowd Beginning to get on Sanchez now. And the crowd uh, is certainly pro Hispanic there. Not nice right hand lead by Marquez. Marquez is almost a local favorite. They've seen him fight so many times here at the Great Western Forum. Sanchez making his debut here. Marquez has been able to land the cleanest blows that he has in the fight. Sanchez, again, has given ground on a couple of times, really hasn't been close to going down, but he's been hit. Each time when he gets hit, he seems to go to some little bit of lateral movement. They try to throw Marquez off. Which is not a bad idea. Marquez fighting a very controlled round, though, and it's allowing him to land a number of good, clean punches. Shot to the body by Sanchez in a busy exchange as we come to the end of the round. I forget the stuff about the love A ball. The number one more nigga that you call A ball. Now I'm caught up in the rap shop. Coming with the boot that crowds like a tiger. If one ain't enough, two will be a lot flyer. Need a tongue pleaser, don't sell a boy. Teaser eight balls, even better. Ice cold from the free. Grab as many as you want, G. Cause we got the best smoke liquor in the country. Round and round and go, drink it up, drink it up. Straight from the bottle, no need for the cup. Who are you want the booze? Better act like you know. Who's number one? So peace, I gotta go. That you call A ball. Still using Western Union to wire money? Next time, use MoneyGram and save up to nine bucks. Unless you don't mind getting... MoneyGram, the better way to wire money. Still 
using Western Union to wire money? Next time, use MoneyGram and save up to nine bucks. Unless you don't mind getting ripped off. MoneyGram, the better way to wire money. Right on cue, as usual, Juan Manuel Marquez picking it up as the fight wears along. You saw that left, but watch a terrific right. Boom, right on the button by Marquez. He was putting punches together and landing good, crisp, sharp, clean shots in round seven. Might have been as good as any two punches thrown so far in the fight. It's been an action-packed affair as we're into round number eight. It is scheduled for 12 if you've just joined us. Marquez is the NABO, the way champion. Pito Sanchez. Outstanding fighter. My weight, the weight. He's really been an outstanding fighter as he's grown up in the divisions. And here we are, featherweight class now. Marquez getting better as the fight goes along. This is the usual script with Juan Manuel, but he's in there with a better guy than he's ever fought before. Yep. The only mark either man sports is a cut of the right eye that Chuck Bodak has taken very good care of. Over the eye, I should say, of Agapito Sanchez came as a result of a headbutt in the first round. Sanchez walks into a left hand that would have moved over just about two inches. Might have been a good night. Respectful, nice uppercut by Marquez. Very much aware of the ability of both men. Good left hand by Sanchez. Yeah, he gets in there, Tom, but what happens is, is he is getting countered a lot as he goes in. It makes you reluctant to move in there if you keep getting countered and keep getting hit a clean shot even after you land. Marquez, I think, is doing a very effective job. He's got him hurt. He hurt him with an uppercut, Rich, and he's got Sanchez against the rope in the corner, and he's all over him like white on rice. He really nailed him with, a, with an uppercut with the right hand. I tell you, Sanchez is tough, and as you said earlier, he does recuperate in a hurry, doesn't he? Yes. It took him a few seconds there. He was really locked. He was in some real deep trouble there. First time in the fight that anybody has really been in dire straits. I tell you, Sanchez doesn't take many backward steps. Hurt still comes moving in now, trying to regain his composure, and he's not standing around or, or clinching, trying to get his uh, his head cleared. He's right back at it. Yeah, but he's slowing down some, Tom, and his head movement is getting less and less, which is enabling Marquez to land better on him. He's got that head not moving as a target. We're in round number eight. It's scheduled for 12, and he will show it to you again, rest assured. That was a corking good uppercut that Marquez threw, and it really jolted Sanchez and started the heavy barrage that Sanchez weathered. Really typical of a Juan Manuel Marquez fight as he just keeps getting better and stronger as the fight wears on. Well, you see now the blood continuing to flow or starting again over the right eye of uh, Sanchez and uh, some concern in his corner, of course. He took a real solid shot. Watch it now. He landed that right, and then he came up the middle with a left. And right here, you can see that as he stumbled back, that Sanchez was in trouble looking for a way out. But those punches are all landing. This is very good uh, work in terms of accuracy by Marquez. That right uppercut seemed to get him into trouble, and then a double one. A second uppercut, I think, was a real key punch there. It backed Agapito Sanchez back into the ropes, and Marquez with the most awesome flurry of the fight. It was indeed a big round for this young man who wears the NABO featherweight title. He nailed Sanchez with everything in his arsenal there, Rich. Uh, maybe in the back of his mind he's saying to himself, i got to do this two or three times to put this guy away, apparently, because uh, Sanchez uh, recovered and recouped in almost record uh, time. He was right back at the war within just a handful of seconds. He's still coming forward. Yeah. You have to wonder if 
if this fight continues like this, Tom, and Marquez goes on to victory, where he would then really stand in terms of the 126 pounders of the world? He's getting up into the rarefied air, I think, and he comes in tonight ranked fifth in the WBO. And of course, the WBO champion is Nassim Hamed. Well, I was going to ask you about him. I, I've never seen him fight. I know you have, or at least you've seen film on him, and I've got a friend of mine in Vegas who's seen him fight several times. He says the prince, as he's lovingly called by his fans, is awkward, but he is something else indeed. Oh, yeah. I have my doubts about him, but he's the real thing. He's a, he is the most unusual fighter in the world today, I think, in terms of style. It's something very unique, and uh, you'd have to go back to the very early days, probably, of a young Cassius Clay to find a guy leaning backwards and as flexible as, uh, as this Nassim Hamed is. The only difference is, is that Hamed has tremendous power in either hand. He can really crack as well. He's become uh, a legend in his own time over there in Old Whitey, hasn't he? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, of course, he did defeat and knock out Tom Boom Boom Johnson, who had held one of the versions of the championship for a long time. For well, a long time, there have been talk of Marco Antonio Barrera and Nassim Hamed, but that would appear to be long ago in the past. Each man here running into a pretty good solid jab. But maybe Marquez might be headed in that direction. If he can get a good victory here, he'd probably rise a notch or two in the rankings. You'd have to start thinking in terms of world championships in the not too distant future. Marquez, who's in the black trimmed in red, has 14 knockouts out of his 19 straight victories. Marquez throws some interesting body punches from long range, Tommy. It kind of uppercuts to the body from a long way away. You don't often see punches hit it. I mean, he's straight on right now, and then he'll punch to the body. Looks as though he's bleeding from the nose, Marquez. And he's taking some shots here tonight. But yeah. As we've already talked about, he's got great heart. He's going to take more than a bloody nose to slow him down. Remember back in the first round, a headbutt caused a cut over the right eye of Agapito Sanchez, and he's weathered that storm thanks to the good services of Chuck Bodak. Yeah, he's fought pretty well this round, Sanchez. I think he has. In fact, I think he's won this round so far, but we going to keep a score for ourselves. We'll be back. Hey, fight fans, the decision is in, and it's unanimous. The all-new Forum Boxing Sportswear is the winner. The finest in sweatshirts, t-shirts, satin jackets, and caps will make you look and feel like a champion. Don't be counted out. Get your Forum Boxing Sportswear at the Great Western Forum or by calling 310-673-1773 now. I'm a soft-spoken kind of guy. There's nothing more important to me than a quiet chat with my son Shaquille. I just marched to the phone and dialed 1-800-COLLECT. The money I saved him, he can use to buy some new backboards. Take it through the hole, Shaquille. And they wonder where he gets it from. 1-800-COLLECT. Save the people you call up to 44%. Up they come for round number nine. Marquez, 87. Sanchez, 84. Excuse me, this is the 10th round. Uh, this is the 10th round. So you've got uh, Marquez, the champion, up by three points, huh? Well, we'll the six rounds to three. Did you give Sanchez the last round? Last round, yes, by the Vito Sanchez. I thought it was a real good bounce back round for him. Because it looked like the fight was beginning to get away from him. Yeah, in light of the beating he took, uh, seemingly so, for about 20 seconds, preceding round. Yeah, I thought he came back to Neither man has been down. And neither man has really looked like they were going to go down. For one brief moment, why Sanchez was in trouble, but he weathered the storm and came away well in round number eight. Scheduled for 12. Marquez, the champion, looking for his 20th straight win. Nice left hand work by Marquez, huh, Rich? Yeah, and he, and he knocked off balance, which is hard to do with a guy like Sanchez. He's got that low center of gravity, Tom. He's got good balance when he comes in. Hard man to knock.
on cross ball, but Marquez was able to do it. Pretty good right hand to the body counter by Sanchez, but Marquez got a couple of shots in as well. He's with the slap a little bit. Pat Russell says, get him up, guys. Get him up. chess match between these two Tom. a lot of fainting in there the guys uh, looking trying to find the opening Marquez is finding it more often Sanchez has registered 14 knockouts as has Marquez Marquez continues to make Sanchez fight from the outside real big advantage for Marquez to keep it right the way it is ring center long distance Sanchez coming up short with punches like that Sanchez would like to get it closer but Marquez really doesn't allow it in case you missed the tail of the tape why Marquez has a four inch advantage in the rate 68 to 64 he's 5'7 to the Sanchez height of 5'4 so he does have an edge in height and reach Taking a point away from Sanchez now. Russell has warned him a couple of times, and Sanchez will lose a point, and he can ill afford to do that. Round 10, coming to a close. Sanchez um, in the gold and black. Boy, you know what a devastating uh, thing it is to lose a point. If he lost around 10 9, and I suspect he might have it, that becomes 10 8. That is really tough to overcome. Right, and, uh, and I think what you had there, Tom, is a dramatic turnaround in the scoring in the fights. Because I, for example, in my scorecard, I had the Marquez only ahead by three points prior to that round with three rounds to go. Still time for Sanchez. But by his losing that round and then losing a point, suddenly, at least on my card, he's five points down yeah. and two rounds to yeah. go. Now, instead of a close fight, now he needs a knockout to win, at least on my card. Yep, I couldn't agree more. Whether your card is right or not, there's nothing wrong with the mathematics, and that is that uh, it would appear Sanchez has got a knock on Kev's out if he wants to take the fight. <laughs> Sanchez, uh, as we've told you, is the shorter of the two men. There's a right hand thrown by Marquez that lands. Left hand wild by Sanchez. The first one was almost low. It might have landed, but the, he doubled up with that left hand. He missed badly. Sanchez coming out very busy here, though, Tom, and maybe sensing a little bit of desperation in Sanchez. He's come out as active as he's been at the start of any round in this fight. Yeah, I think that's a valid approach. I, I couldn't agree with you more, but he's going to have to catch some magic in one big moment here. He's going to turn the tide. He runs into a yeah, he got a little too fancy. He went to, fought a little bit too long about that one, I think. Too many, uh, too many feints and fakes, and finally Marquez just poked him one of the chops. And he just got nailed with the right hand that was low. Marquez did. No uh, admonition from Pat Russell, the referee, and Marquez 
whether uh, it hurt or not was not going to give him satisfaction thinking that he had hurt me. Just blood coming now from the eye of Sanchez, and he went wheeling into the ring ropes. I don't think he's that hurt, but he did uh, cascade in and bounce off. But there is blood coming now from the cut over the right eye of uh, Sanchez. He got nailed again as he tried to close. Yeah, and what is happening here is while Sanchez is taking chances, Tom, to try to get to Marquez, sensing his predicament, he is getting hit. He is getting clean shots, and he's getting hit very hard shots. And I think he's been slowing up here, and I think he was a little bit hurt by that left hook that sent him into the ropes. Round 11 coming to a close. There's the bell and a busy 11 rounds in the books with one more yet to go. Take a quick reminder as you look at Acapito Sanchez and the blood flowing, although Bodak's done an outstanding job, that uh, the Crow, Jesse Magana, comes back on the 12th of May here at the Great Western Forum. And uh, we look forward to his return. I know his faithful will as well. We hope you can join us then. Take another look at this one, Rich. All right, here comes the left hook by... That seemed to be a little short, but that second one got to him. And if you look at his face, he looks a little bit jaded there, a little bit dazed after that punch. Then he got hit another good crisp shot before the end of the round. He put him in a bad spot, and I did see blood spurting from that eye yeah. in the I think, corner. I think that left hand that sent him into the ropes was just enough to just open up that cut that Bodak's been working on and to bring it loose one more time. So here they come now, getting ready for the 12th round. Up they come. Russell brings the two fighters out. No touch gloves. We're not privy to all the scorecards, of course, but I would uh, rely on Rich Morata's. Uh, his mathematics sometimes isn't too good, but his knowledge of the fight game is excellent. And I would think that you've got Sanchez has got a knock with Marquez out if he wants to win this time. Well, you never know. I had De La Hoya ahead by one point going into the final round of the Whitaker. Well, you didn't have him. certainly didn't agree with that. No, but I mean... Uh, uh, at least I had the right guy. Yes, you did. And uh, <laughs> I don't know about the judge that saw it 116 to 111, if I remember. I don't. Sometimes it's, uh, you see different things, of course. And judges have different ways of scoring fights. They give points to people for their aggressiveness and for trying to make the fight. Other people hold that if you're going to take the title away from the champion, you better knock him out or do something with that. I don't know what Sanchez is doing here other than maybe trying to last out the 12 because he has not come out with fire in his eyes the way that he did in that last round. And in fact, that eye has already opened up again in this round and it's bleeding very badly in this round. I don't know. Um, there's more blood here coming down the side of Sanchez's face now than we've seen at any time during the fight. Well, Marquez bleeding from the nose, but I think this has really been a good discipline performance against a cagey veteran here tonight by Juan Manuel Marquez. Oh, yeah. Bear in mind that Sanchez came into this fight tonight with a record of 22 and 3, and he's been in with some of the very best at 122 pounds and even lighter, and at 124. And there's no backup in Sanchez. He's put in a great performance, but Marquez continues to improve and continues to impress. He seems to get better with each and every outing. And he is a very popular fighter here in Los Angeles. We've never seen him lose. He's 19 and 1. And even when he's had some troubled moments, Rich, he's been a class item in the ring. Yeah, he fought only eight fights in Mexico before coming here to the United States. He impressed us immediately with a four-round KO of Israel Gonzalez and Cesar Salas in Las Vegas. And uh, we were anxious to see more of him. And every time we've seen him, it's been a pretty good shot. Yeah. And he's working that uppercut with the left hand to perfection now. He has nailed Sanchez with it three or four times as the smaller, shorter man tries to move his way inside without success. And they're going to go right to the wire with a, some solid shots at each other. This is a real nice fight. Look at how oh, close Marquez has been. He never left his game no. down. He fought a brilliant fight here, I think. I 
think he did too. I'd be surprised if the judges saw it any other way other than the way you handled him the card. Of course, he was coming in, the crowd's favorite, and as he gets his nose wiped off, why uh, he's basking in a job well done. We'll be back to get the official count, and our congratulations to Sanchez. He fought well, but we think in defeat. We'll be back in a moment. Kelsey Grammer, a player in the Toyota Celebrity Challenge. Semi Ballesteros, one of the game's greatest players, once said, I don't trust psychiatrists. They're like golfers. All of them have a different answer to your problem. I find that just a little disturbing. Mr. Ballesteros, consider that gauntlet dropped. Kelsey, your problem is your hands. It's your hands. Kelsey, it's the feet. It's the feet. Kelsey, you're looking at the ball with the wrong eye. No, no, the other eye. The Toyota Celebrity Challenge, Saturday on Fox Sports West. Semi, I concede. It's the quest for the cup. Because the NHL playoffs are here and the Mighty Ducks want war. Anaheim is ready to start their climb to Lord Stanley's Cup. Yari Curry has been there before and he knows what it takes to make the cup. Now, Korea and Solani are ready to hoist the cup on their shoulders. Catch the excitement of select Mighty Ducks playoff games coming your way on Fox Sports West 2. Check local listings. While we're waiting for Jimmy Lennon to give us the judges' report, I'll remind you, Jesse El Cuervo Magana will be back on our May 12th uh, headline uh, here at the Great Western Forum. Join us for that one then. Well, Jimmy's got the microphone now, the judges' cards. Let's find out the decision. Jimmy, if you will, please. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Our judge at ringside, Dick Young, scores at 117-110. Fritz Werner scores at 119-108. to Chuck Hassett scores about 120 to 107. All three in favor of the winner. And still NABO featherweight champion, Juan Manuel Marquez. So Marquez continues to reign uh, 20th victory. The uh, contestant number one and contestant number five will advance into the Miss Ringsider competition. Uh, the